I want to issue a warning before I start this video. I bit my lip like four days ago eating a Starburst and it hurts really bad. It's been hurting for days and it hurts to talk. So just um, bear with me. <laughs> I'm suffering a serious Starburst related injury, okay? I'm having a really hard time. <laughs> and to think it was a Starburst that did this to me. Okay, well it was me. I bit my own lip, but still I'm in so much pain. Okay. I don't know if you knew, but I'm actually a history major. I'm, I'm studying history in school. You probably didn't catch the fact that I talk about it every two seconds, but I'm, I'm a history major. I like history. <laughs> I'm actually graduating this semester, so you know, go me. <laughs> 2020, fun semester to graduate, am I right? You know, with things being canceled and, and probably no ceremonies. Anyway, I wasn't gonna walk anyway, but the point here is that I love history, but I also love home renovations. I watch a lot of home renovation type shows. I don't have cable, but I do have Hulu, thanks to my student Spotify. <laughs> and there's a bunch of HGTV shows that I'm obsessed with. Obviously, like, Fixer Upper is a classic that I've loved for years, but there's also one called Hometown. And both of these shows, they kind of buy these, like, cheap, old, broken down houses, and they restore them with their character, and, you know, they, they restore them, basically. And I love that. I'm from Florida. Everything here was built like yesterday. We don't have character here. I'm not kidding. There, <laughs> There's no character in Florida houses, at least not where I live. And so I'm obsessed with these ones that do in other places, like Texas, for example, um, where Fixer Upper is set. But it kind of got me thinking, what if we built an apartment, like an older apartment that we restore and kind of return to its original glory? And so I built this, what I'm calling a 1920s inspired apartment, but like it's not, it, we're playing The Sims 4. You know, so like, <laughs> that was the vision that I had in my brain. I did it in one of the historical apartments in the game, and so it has these plaques on the wall that you can't move, which are honestly kind of really annoying. A bunch of the apartments have these, like, traits to make them kind of quirky and, and stuff, and one of the traits is historical, and when it has that trait, you can't move these weird plaques from the walls. This one's also haunted, but I didn't tell you that, okay? Because, um, I'm trying to sell this place. It's it's not haunted. It just it's just kind of drafty, you know. Don't worry about it. But <laughs> anyway, in my head, this place was built in like 1920, and now someone in 2020 has bought it and tried to fix it up again, but kind of like bring back the original charm and character that it once had. And so I try to have it kind of have this sort of closed off floor plan. You know, I was kind of going for that smaller sort of area that it was. I wanted it to be a two bedroom apartment, but also be kind of small. So I used like some big fancy doors and like kind of had it be a little bit closed off, but very intense. Intentionally. I think that's kind of classic and characteristic of the style of this place, you know, to have that sort of thing. And so I've got like a small little closed off kitchen, a fancy formal dining space, you know, there's a fireplace. It's all very fancy and classy and pretty. And I love this. I love this apartment. I had so much fun building it. It is on my gallery, my idea is a little simsy, but just so you know, you can actually upload apartments like as apartments or as lots to the gallery. And so to get this one, you're gonna have to search for rooms on my gallery page. I have it just set as like 18 Culpepper House where it needs to be placed. And then you have to like go into build mode in the lot so like move a sim here go into build mode and then place the room down as a room so each of the individual rooms don't count as like rooms in the games so might have to like redraw some walls where the doors are and stuff but it works you've got to place it as a room first because for some reason you can't upload apartments onto the gallery which is kind of annoying i guess it makes a little bit of sense because of the fact that like they're all different sizes and stuff but um it's a room on the gallery, <laughs> in case you didn't know. Anyway, speaking of graduating and of university, I am finishing school this semester. While I was traveling for spring break, I got news from my school that I was like officially set. Yes, I can graduate. Like they checked my like audit, blah, blah, blah. And like, yes, you can graduate. And I was kind of worried. I knew it will be fine, but like I had gotten an email like two weeks ago, maybe more than that now, that was like, hey, you're missing a part of your degree audit. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. But the thing is, there was a class that's required for my degree that they were supposed to offer last semester that they canceled, like last fall semester, but it's only ever offered in the fall, right? And so I was supposed to take it this last semester uh, and then graduate this semester, but then they canceled the class. So it wasn't offered anymore last semester. And they were like, hey, don't worry, we canceled it, but we're going to offer, like, you can use one of these other classes to, to fill out requirement. I'd already taken one of them, so it was fine. Like, I was good to go as per the email they sent. But then like the website, the school's little like degree auditor program was like, hello, you're missing something. And so I got all paranoid and stressed, but it was fine. <laughs> because I had I had the email, I was like, look what you said. And it, they were like, oh yeah. So it was okay, I am indeed graduating this semester, but I had like a, a panic for like a day because I was like, but you said, and, but it, it's fine. I also know a lot of you guys probably have school or work canceled in your home because we're all, you know, social distancing and stuff. And I am, um, I'm not gonna talk about that too much like on YouTube because that's not really like 
the style of content I make and things like that. But just so you guys know, um, that is really important, okay? <laughs> um, we're facing a pandemic. You might think it's not a big deal, like you're young, you're not gonna get sick, it's totally fine. Um, and that's true, you're probably gonna be okay, but there's also a lot of people that aren't gonna be okay. Uh, for example, my dad is on chemo, so I'm avoiding my family for the next few weeks, so I was just traveling, and so I'm trying to be like, I'm not going near you, because if I spread it to him, I'll be fine. He probably won't be. And so just keep that in mind, okay? You're, you're distancing yourself for a reason. It's not because of just you. We have an entire society to worry about, you know what I mean? So anyway, I, I get it's inconvenient and annoying and stuff, but uh, uh, you get to be home and watch Lil Simsy videos. So like, it kind of works out, you know? <laughs> and I mean, I don't leave my house anyway. Like, I, I work from home. I take classes online. Like, I don't see anyone but my parents. Um, I just won't see them either for the next few weeks. But that's okay. You know what? You just stick out, stick around at home. Hang out and watch some Simsy vids and everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> there is a bit more to the story of this place that I didn't really tell you guys about, like, the reason that I built it and who I imagined to live here. Because in my head, Eliza Pancakes finally got divorced from Bob. You know, the poor girl. These two have a loveless marriage they have for a long time, and the poor girl was like, you know what? I'm out. Finally. And so she moved into this apartment by herself. She spent all of her money buying this beautiful apartment in San Maestuno, and um, she lives here now. They have a son, Iggy, in my brain. The Sims team posted a version of the pancakes in the gallery for the anniversary. Maybe the 15th anniversary of The Sims? Or maybe it was like the third of The Sims 4? I don't remember. There's some anniversary they posted the the pancakes in the gallery with a son called like a toddler called Iggy. Maybe it was just when toddlers came out, but either way, they made a son for them <laughs> on the gallery. And so in my head, he exists, but like later down the line from when The Sims 4 starts, you know? And so in my brain, it's like 10 years later after The Sims 4 like save usually begins. And so Iggy is like eight now <laughs> because he comes like a bit later on. Do you know what I mean? And so now Eliza, eight, years later with her son has moved away from Bob into this apartment in the city. And honestly, this apartment, if we're talking like realistically, this apartment is probably worth like four times as much as their house in Willow Creek. Cause like, think about how much real estate in the city costs. Like buying an apartment like this in like New York City, can you imagine? Millions, we're talking millions of dollars. Whereas I think the pancake house is um not that. It is certainly not a million dollar house by any means. I mean, it's in a nice neighborhood, you know, but there's only like, I don't know, it's not, it's not a million dollar mansion and it's certainly not a million dollar apartment. So, <laughs> but I think that's funny. She definitely upgraded a little bit here, but it looks pretty and I really enjoyed making it. I wanted a piano so bad, but I had to settle for an organ. And I was kind of thinking like, imagine being next door neighbors to this house and they have a full on organ in their dining room. Like what a nightmare, <laughs> but that's okay. Like, it's just, it's fine. It's, it's 1920, you know? <laughs> That's not how it works. But doing this has inspired me so much to want to try, like, a decades challenge kind of build style. Because there are challenges like that for The Sims 4. People build, like, things for different decades. And I've built a few things like that. Like, I did a 1970s house, and I was looking at, like, inspo pics, and we try to make, like, the perfect 70s build. I want to try and do more of those, but, like, actually try and make them accurate. Because this one, I was kind of just, like, building a place that was built a while ago, but it's been restored. I just threw my chapstick. But like, obviously this apartment isn't set in 1920. I mean, it's got modern appliances and stuff. It's just, it might have some like paneling from 1920 that they have like painted again, you know? And some restored hardwood floors. Like, and maybe the doors are original to the building, who knows? <laughs> but a lot of times with stuff like this, they'll like come into an old place and they'll like restore the hardwood floors, restore the paneling on the walls, but then they'll like, you know, redo the entire kitchen, make the entire bathroom brand new. Like they definitely like come into these places and just like modernize them. Them a ton as far as like practicality goes but they'll keep some like original detailing like the hardwood floors that will last forever maybe the organs original to organs how long do I don't know much about music I'm, I'm not an organ expert by any means the music or the, the human body I'm not an expert <laughs> I'm a history major. I am taking a medical terminology class this semester though. I was looking for- I threw my chapstick again! I'm sorry. I was looking for another like upper level elective that I could take because I- I wanted to take something interesting and I was trying to find a um like an upper level elective that would kind of fit my schedule and would be kind of new for me because I was trying to find something new, you know, as- as one does and I picked medical terminology. So it's a pretty easy class because it's like it's online and so it's mostly like textbook stuff. It's very similar to how my Spanish class was run, like with like an online textbook homework sort of system, but it's so time consuming. It's just it's like very repetitive, like busy work basically, which it kind of is for things like that because you just got to learn stuff. But I'm taking a medical terminology class, so maybe I am a medical expert. You guys, I'm basically a doctor, clearly. <laughs> 
For that, I have enjoyed that class a little bit though, because I feel like a lot of things I already knew going into that class, and it like makes things make more sense. Like things you already knew about medical terminology, it's like, oh right, and then everything else makes sense. I mean, it's great. It's very eye-opening. Um, I'm sure you could probably learn all that stuff just by, you know, doing some research, but <laughs> I'm taking a course on it. I spent a very long time yesterday on the plane doing homework for it, which was fun. I mean, you know, as one does, right? <laughs> I also realized today, not to talk about me much anymore in my school system, but I only have four, like, big papers left this entire semester, and then I'm done. I mean, I have, like, other homework and, and lots of, like, tests and blah 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 stuff, but, like, as far as, like, big boy papers, like, big assignments that are due, that aren't just, like, your everyday stuff, I only have four left, and I think that's very important. And I got an email today from a professor, today officially marks the halfway point of my final semester, and I think that's fun. <laughs> So, I'm gonna keep talking about it a little bit because it's, it's definitely on my mind right now, but soon I'll be done with school and I can have so much free time. I can be like a normal human because um, I already work full-time. I, I make YouTube videos and I stream every day if you guys didn't know. Um, and so I don't really do much else outside of that. Like I kind of just work and do homework all day every day and then that's it. Um, but I'm excited to have hobbies. I want to take up knitting. Um, I'm really excited about it. <laughs> I've been watching like knitting videos. I'm not kidding. I, I cannot wait to have a hobby. This is like a really big deal for me. Um, I've been really busy for years um, and I'm, I'm graduating a year early because I, I worked really hard to take extra classes and, and kind of get it done. So I'm really excited to, to not have that anymore. You know, I do think I'll miss school a lot though. Like I kind of, I kind of enjoy, do, I mean, it's a lot of work and it's stressful and kind of overwhelming at times, but I, I do enjoy my classes and I do enjoy school. Um, so I'm going to miss that a little bit, but I, I won't miss the stress and the anxiety. <laughs> for being honest, the last couple weeks have been um, definitely very anxiety inducing in general for I think many of us, but uh, I've, we, we, we've been going through it. <laughs> Yesterday was a rough day for me, but it's okay. We're getting through it. It's just, you know, when you like start doing better as far as like anxiety stuff goes, and you're like, I'm great. You know, you kind of forget and you're, well, forget's a strong word, but like you kind of, you're doing better. And then all of a sudden you have a bad day again and you have a panic attack in the airport and you're like, oh, right. <laughs> This is this. Yeah, we're back in it folks. Anyway, I'm with you guys and I hope you're all doing all right Because I know this kind of stuff can be stressful and, and it's just a stressful weird time and we're all in this together Okay, we're all in this together and now that we're social distancing we have more time to play sims I mean you see like you don't have time you can't go out with your friends You can't go to the gym, you know, but what can you do? You can sit at home on your laptop and play the sims and Animal Crossing comes out for the switch this week Do you have any I'm my switch is on my desk. I'm ready. You don't have you have no idea how ready I am for this I haven't ever played Animal Crossing before, uh, so I am really looking forward to playing it on my Switch um, with the new one coming out this week because I think Animal Crossing is like right up my alley. I think you all probably know this too. I mean, honestly, it's kind of shocking that I haven't played it before, but like most of the time when I played DS games back in the olden days, it was on a shared DS with my brother and we played like exclusively Mario games. And so I never played Animal Crossing. I played Nintendogs which is, you know, the same thing, basically, yeah. But I haven't played Animal Crossing before, so I'm so excited. I've been watching, like, Animal Crossing videos. I just, I can't stop thinking about it. I might stream it. I don't have a capture card, so I can't stream from my Switch yet, but I might buy one and I might stream it. I'm not sure if I want to stream it just yet. I kind of want to, like, learn how to play first before I try streaming it on Twitch, because I don't want to be, like, that idiot that doesn't know how to play Animal Crossing and, like, messes things up. And it would be fine if I was that idiot, but I just, I don't want to deal with people making fun of me in my Twitch chat. So I might like learn how to play Animal Crossing, get a hang of it, my, get the hang of it myself, and then stream it. But I do stream every day on Twitch, if you guys didn't know. Um, that's twitch.tv forward slash lilsimsy. I'm live every single day, um, which could be fun if you guys are hanging out at home. If you want to come hang out at my streams, we're probably going to do some building later tonight on stream. That is twitch.tv forward slash lilsimsy. Um, but yeah, we just hang out at 4 p.m. Eastern time every single day. <laughs> It, we just, it's great fun. I'm serious. We, it, it's, I mean, it's me and it's a three hour live stream of Sims building. Like how much, how much better than that can you get, right? But in the comments, let me know, are you excited for Animal Crossing? Um, are you going to play it? Are you going to watch other people play it? Let me know. Honestly, what's your favorite Switch game? Because I only have like four Switch games. <laughs> I play like exclusively Stardew Valley on my Switch mostly. Um, I also have like Breath of the Wild, but I don't really play that. And I bought My Time at Porsche today because I love that game on PC, but I haven't played on my Switch before. And so I don't really ha I, I <laughs> my Switch is like a Stardew Valley machine, and I wish I was kidding, but I'm not. Um, I don't really play many Switch games. I don't have much free time, but one of my hobbies can be Switch playing. When I graduate, I can knit and I can play my Switch. <laughs> 
I'm not kidding. This is like, I'm, I'm thriving on this concept. Like I've been trying to get through the semester by, just by thinking like, okay, in four more essays, you can play on your Switch, Kayla. <laughs> but I would love some Switch recommendations. Also PC games, honestly. Things you think I might like, I would really appreciate to be told about because you know me very well. I think we all have very similar tastes in games. I mean, my, fa my favorites are like Stardew Valley, Planet Zoo, My Time at Portia, the sims <laughs> city skylines like you're getting the vibe right if there's any other ones that you know that are like that like simulation games are right up my alley so if you've got any recommendations let me know in the comments honestly you guys will probably benefit from that too because there's gonna be like people commenting ideas that you'd probably like so i mean we're all in this together <laughs> but like i said this house apartment is on the gallery if you want to download it stay safe stay inside and wash your hands my dear friends and i will see you guys all tomorrow bye everybody Wash your hands, but also moisturize them. Nobody likes dry hands. You want soft and clean hands. <laughs> Was that helpful? You're welcome.